Insurance is presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust, serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson, celebrating 25 years of commitment to Guam, Micronesia, and the CNMI. Cars Plus Hyundai, home of the Kona electric vehicle, an electric heart with an SUV soul. Test drive yours today at Cars Plus. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Tonight on Your News Leader, COVID restrictions ease slightly in time for Christmas. Plus, a House resolution for impeachment was pre-filed for CNMI Governor Ralph Torres. And three months of COVID data presented during the weekly public health briefing. Hafadeh, good evening everyone. Guahu si Isaiah Uggen and thank you for joining us. Topping off the newscast, the governor is easing COVID restrictions again, but only slightly. In a post on her social media site, she announced she's raising the limit for social gatherings ahead of next week's Christmas celebration. Effective Saturday, December 18, social gathering limits for outdoor events will increase from 75 to 100 persons. This is the only change to COVID-19 restrictions I am making at this time under the advice and counsel of our healthcare experts. Now, I want to make clear that as we enter a new year and as we near the second year mark of this ongoing crisis, that we are not yet out of the woods. We are monitoring a new variant called Omicron, which is highly transmissible. The good news is that vaccinations and boosters do work and are proving effective at preventing the severe illness caused by Omicron. The governor says while there are no confirmed Omicron cases at this time, it's only a matter of time. And she urges the public to continue the necessary precautions to prevent a fourth surge. In regional news, a CNMI House resolution for the impeachment of Governor Ralph Torres was pre-filed this morning detailing six articles of impeachment. KUM Samas Minglonia has the details. The House JGL committee wants to impeach a governor. A governor who was elected by the people. But who do they not like? The governor on Tuesday anticipating what's coming. An NMI House resolution with six articles of impeachment was pre-filed at the legislature Friday morning. Especially Representative Governor Selena Babauta, who chairs the investigative committee, pre-filed the resolution with the backing of 10 other lawmakers. The Articles uh, listed in the resolution are a result of that um, in carrying our inspection of the documents and, you know, the sworn testimony of witnesses. They detail six articles of impeachment, two articles for commission of felony, two articles for corruption, and two articles for neglect of duty. Those charges include the governor's travel, reimbursements, and misuse of resources. It will be formally introduced on the in the House session scheduled for Monday, this coming Monday. And then at that point, there's several options uh, that are available to the members of the House of Representatives. One, we can ask the floor leader who, who has the sole authority to put um, items up on the legislative calendar, and we can either vote for it then or, um, or or a committee could be established established by the speaker, uh, an impeachment committee, let's say, or we can leave it on the legislative calendar for one session. Uh, there's there's many options and and the procedures are vast. The House would need two thirds of its members to initiate impeachment. The Senate may convict after a hearing with at least two thirds of its members voting. In an interview Friday morning before news of the filing, sitting Lieutenant Governor Arno Palacios, who is running for governor as an independent and testified before the Legislative Committee, told KOAM, enough is enough. At the end, uh, as I stated, Thomas, uh, all this investigation is centered around the governor's expenditure and some of the practices that have been revealed. And only he can really answer those questions and he was given that that opportunity and and he 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 uh he didn't take it Tomas Manglonia for KUAM news on Saipan 
CNMI Governor Ralph Torres released a statement just before news time, writing in part, Today is a dark day for our islands. After months and months of wasteful spending of time and resources instead of working together to help our people during this unprecedented global crisis, the Democrat-led House chooses posture and use their time to pursue even more false and baseless charges. I refuse to play into their pol political circus before, and I will continue to fight this ridiculous and re reprehensible enroachment on this executive branch, end quote. In other news, former Department of Corrections Deputy Director Joey Allen Afaji Terlahi was indicted by a Superior Court grand jury today on a charge of felonious restraint as a third-degree felony and two charges of official misconduct as a misdemeanor. Terlahi resigned from his position at DOC in September of 2019 after he was named by an FBI agent in federal court related to the indictment of former Joint Mayor Jesse Blas. Bloss was accused of extortion and accepting bribes from a confidential informant posing as a drug trafficker. He pled guilty. According to the FBI agent's testimony, Terlahi was a marshal along with other individuals who was present during an incident where Bloss allegedly beat a woman up and held her for three days before he was at DOC. Terlahi was a marshal at the Superior Court of Guam. Today's indictment comes after several months of active investigation by the Office of the Attorney General, including the collection and review of evidence and witness interviews. According to the indictment, Sir Lahi is accused of exposing the victim to risk of serious bodily injury at a barbecue back in 2017 and for ignoring and abusing his position as a government official in relation to a crime committed. Terlahi will be arraigned on January 5th of 2022. Terlahi is the son of Senator Pito Terlahi, who chairs the Legislature Committee on Public Safety. The senator was not available for comment. The victim in the fatal fire in Toto has been identified as 27-year-old Daniel Kanata. As KUM News reported, it was on the morning of December 8th where Kanata was extricated from a home on San Miguel Street. He was transported to Naval Hospital where he later succumbed to his injuries. His sister Francesca Kanata tells KUM News, quote, Daniel was a loving father to five beautiful children. He was the jokester of the family and selfless when it came to helping others. May my brother rest in peace, end quote. The family is asking the community for their continued prayers as they prepare for his funeral services. The CNMI is seven weeks into its first surge and hospitalizations are increasing along with daily COVID case reports. KUM's Tomas Manglonia reports on new changes on protocols in the CNMI. We have 17 hospitalized at both the uh, main hospital as well as the alternate care site. And that... Uh, comprises of seven at CHC Hospital and 10 at the Alchita Care site. Seven weeks into the NMI's first surge, healthcare professionals are concerned about holiday gatherings. With this high number of hospitalizations, we want everyone to please, uh, you know, please reconsider, please reconsider on, on your gatherings. The patterns that we're seeing here in, uh, with these cases are that it is it is happening in in social gatherings it is happening within the household it is happening with loved ones their focus remains on testing treatment and boosters the news comes with a change to travel protocols next week anyone that is fully vaccinated um, will not be tested on day five but they will be tested on on date of arrival with the antigen testing and then uh, they will they will not have to quarantine. Uh, unvaccinated has not uh, the quarantine protocols will not change remains the same. Those changes are amid the growing concern over Omicron. Government restrictions are set to expire on Sunday. The CDMI at a 91% vaccination rate with 1,914 new cases since October 28. Tomas Manglonia for KOM News. The Department of Public Health and Social Services released three months' worth of data at today's press briefing, as well as info on the dead-on-arrival cases. KUM's Daniel Perez reports. And our positivity rate has gone down. It's now about 2%, which is really, really, we're really looking good here. In terms of the cases by day, we've also went from back in September, you know, a couple hundred cases per day down to probably 10 to 15 we're averaging. According to territorial epidemiologist, Dr. Ann Pabutsky, COVID cases continue to drop. 
Dr. Pabutsky added that COVID-based hospitalizations have also decreased. Our island-wide hospitalization over the past three months has gone down. This are COVID-specific um, hospitalizations. There might be hundreds of people in the hospital, but they're not COVID anymore. And very few in the ICU. And we are also seeing a decrease in deaths. The investigation on the dead on arrival cases was also tackled. When we ran the analysis recently comparing the dead on arrivals and the non-dead on arrivals for the entire year of 2021, 85% of the dead on arrivals were unvaccinated. So the, the vast majority were unvaccinated, but even more so among the dead on arrivals. With the holidays around the corner and the threat of Omicron spreading, Dr. Pabutsky continues to urge residents to get their boosters and vaccines. The big focus now is getting people to get their boosters. If they haven't been vaccinated, get vaccinated and then get your third shot and for um, and getting the kids vaccinated because this is probably the only protection we have when Omicron gets here. Dr. Pabutsky would also like to remind residents to continue practicing the three W's of watching your distance, wearing your masks and washing your hands. Daniel Perez reporting for Guam's News Network. Daniel Perez, thank you for that report. KUM News spoke exclusively this morning via Zoom with the committee chair on education to get her thoughts on how the Guam Department of Education is managing federal funds. Here's more. A virtual oversight hearing was held Wednesday to get a status report on GDOE's budget and to get a clearer picture of how federal money is being spent. GDOE is claiming a $45 million budget shortfall for this fiscal year. It appeared that the Guam Department of Education wasn't prepared for the discussion. However, Senator Selena Nelson, who called the hearing, said the topics were sent to the agency's office. It's okay if they, they don't have the answer up front. I mean, their budget is so large and cumbersome, um, and they're dealing with many different types of revenue sources, and so that's fine. Um, the important part is that we continue to be present in their budget discussions, and that's what we asked. Um, so we should be anticipating some uh, invitations for when the board meets to discuss about the budget or the, the, the GDOE team meets to discuss about the budget and how the revenue sources will be spent. And we and it's a good time to do it because they usually put uh, present their budget to the legislature in January. Senator Nelson pointed out that based on her number from the AS400, GDOE isn't seeing a shortfall but experienced a surplus a few years ago. So for the following years in 2017 and 2018, um, their fund balance at the end of the year for 2017 was like 4.8 million and then 2000, 2018 was 2.2 million, roughly, right? Um, a little bit over that. So. You know, my question is, and this is this is what we're going to continue to discuss um, um, when Mr. Frank Cooper nurse is available. We're sending a, a request to meet with him and um, to see to follow up on, you know, their interpretation of the budget and our interpretation of the budget. GDW Superintendent John Fernandez claims that the department has seen budget cuts ranging from 12 to 15 percent in the last few years. GDU received millions of dollars in federal funds and is still eyeing at least a shortfall of $9.6 million. Senator Nelson still has questions unanswered about how GDU is spending the federal budget and why they are experiencing a budget deficit. They received CARES fund money, um, ESF-1 and ESF-2 is what you would refer to it as, and then we also received ARP money specifically to GDOE. So how are we managing the funds? And um, and from our understanding, ARP funds are a little, are a little bit more flexible um, and can be used for operational costs than the ESF-1 and ESF-2. And so we're just trying to wrap our mind around what GDOE is doing with the, um, with the appropriation that we've given them. A public hearing was held today on a bill by Senator Tello Tadegui to require all government agencies to post their staffing patterns on their individual websites every quarter. In addition, the measure would require monthly postings of personnel information such as all new hires, terminations, transfers, salary changes, and bonuses. Among those supporting the bill was University of Guam President Dr. Thomas Christ, although he did indicate certain reservations. 
if you're reporting on things like somebody being demoted or someone you know being transferred uh, being let go those kinds of things we typically don't publicize and make easily available making it available staffing patterns for appropriate oversight makes perfect sense we're happy to do that we do a lot of that already um, and so tweaks that makes sense but i think um, you know exposing our employees to um, harassment and ridicule and those kinds of things is, is uh, uh, you know, that's something to take into consideration. Ty Degui said the bill is meant to increase transparency and so the community is better aware of how public money is being spent. Still no confirmation from the Navy of the arrival next week of a big ship that will bring thousands of service personnel ashore for Liberty during the Christmas holiday. But there was an announcement of a new submarine to be home ported in Guam. The USS Jefferson City, a Los Angeles class fast attack submarine with a crew of about 140 sailors is moving here from Honolulu. An official Navy publication quotes submarine squadron 15 Commodore Captain Brett Grabby as saying, quote, this home port change continues our focus to bring our most capable submarines to theater with the greatest amount of striking power and operational capability to bear in the time list manner, end quote. The US Jeff USS Jefferson is now the fifth submarine to be home ported in Guam. And KUAM and Coast 360 throughout the month of December share making spirits bright. We want to see video and pictures of your Christmas trees, decorations, and holiday photos. Make sure to use the hashtag Making Spirits Bright Guam on Facebook or Instagram. Check out these images from Nadine Makan and her family. Keep the smile on your face The moments you can't replace And I'll be around Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you. Calvo's Insurance. Count on us for life. Half a day. This is Governor Lou Leon Guerrero. If you're struggling to pay rent and utilities because of the pandemic, your government can help. Our Emergency Rental Assistance Program provides direct relief to you. To date, over $6.9 million has helped over 1,500 households. Apply online at doa.guam.gov or call the Department of Administration's Emergency Rental Assistance Program at 671-638-4518 or 19. all-new Hyundai Tucson. This is a brand new thing. It's a special delivery to your inbox every week with your KUAM News Roundup, program advisories, and promotions. Sign up for the weekly KUAM Digital Digest today on KUAM.com. Welcome back to your news leader. Dozens of Manila residents lined up from their cars to get free food as the village's mayor's office, members of the AmeriCorps Azuda y Para y Comunidad program from Sanctuary Incorporated, and volunteers from the Anderson Air Force Base uh, distributed food commodities this morning. An hour before the distribution of prepackaged goods, the long line of cars can be seen parked in the hot sun stretching from the Santa Ter Teresita Church in Manila, all the way to Jamaican Grill located along the GCC Road. According to Manila Mayor Alan Agata, frozen ham and about 300 bags of non-perishable items including nuts, beans, corned beef, mac and cheese, powdered milk, among other things, were distributed to families in need as early as 9 a.m. Agata says, quote, the demand for free food remains high. He encourages islanders in need of food to take advantage of the program.
Angata adds that village residents can still pick up the leftover commodities from the mayor's office. With Christmas only a week away, members from the Marine Corps donated a truckload of toys to the Salvation Army today for families in need around the island. KUM's Daniel Perez has this next story. Toys, toys, and more toys everywhere. It's definitely going to be a very Merry Christmas for kids around the island. Commanding officer of the Marine Corps base, Camp Blas, Colonel Christopher Bopp expressed joy over the toy transfer. The feeling of joy that we have in doing this is just indescribable, knowing that we're bringing hope and happiness so that children are able to enjoy the spirit of Christmas and have a wonderful holiday. Um, it's just an incredible feeling of goodness that we're, we're glad we can do. This year, the Marine Corps Reserve collected 6,208 toys. Lead coordinator for Toys for Tots on Guam and the CNMI, Captain A.J. Ramos. This whole project, it, it's a testament to, to the collective strength and the collective goodwill of the island of Guam. It's not just a, it's not just a Marine Corps Reserve program, but it's, it's an effort by, you know, by everyone here on Guam to help us uh, achieve this. And so it's really, it's, uh, it's unique, it's wonderful, it's great that we're able, to, we're able to do this, especially during a time of COVID and during a pandemic. So, um, so yeah, I'm really proud and I'm, I'm really happy to be a part of this. Captain Eric Rood and Corps Officer Kerry Rood of the Salvation Army told KUAM just where these toys will be heading to. We're just uh, helping families that are in need that have no way of actually providing toys for their family, for their kids. Come next week, uh, Monday through Thursday, families are going to come. They have their appointment. They show up. They get a box of food, and they get to shop for their kids. They get to come through, and mom and dad actually get to pick the toys for the child. So it's, it's, a, it's a good experience for everybody, and we walk away just feeling so good about uh, our, our island. Daniel Perez reporting for Guam's News Network. In the spirit of giving and making the holiday season a little brighter, our friends over at GTA held an employee donation drive to benefit Harvest House, whose mission is to provide physical needs, spiritual encouragement, and emotional support for foster children and families. GTA donated toys and essential items such as toothpaste, shampoo, conditioner, soap, diapers, and pull-ups, underwear, and socks for all sizes. Harvest House is an empowerment by GTA partner. The company is providing much needed resources and complimentary, complimentary telecommunication services year round so that Harvest House continues its mission. The Guam Police Department is holding a free Christmas break youth program as part of Project U where activities will be held for kids ages 13 to 16. GPD Chief Steven Ignacio. We want to make sure that the youth understand that there's a positive relationship that you can have with your, your police department. Uh, we don't always want to be a, a negative uh, part of their life, you know, picking them up when they're beyond control, when they've committed crimes. Uh, this is our way of uh, fostering a positive environment, teaching them life skills, really. It's not just about involving the police department, but teaching them life skills, teaching them uh, mental health skills, you know, how to deal with, uh, you know, bullying, how to deal with family life. Project U will be from December 20th to the 23rd and then December 27th to the 30th. If you're interested in registering your kids, please call 671-475-8554, 671-475-8554. Reeds Across America runs across 3,000 cemeteries around the world, recognizing and honoring veterans that have served and are currently serving. A motorcade will kick off tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. and will start from the Jigo Gym and make its way to the Navy Memorial Cemetery, Cemetery in Hagatnia. Guam Office of Veterans Affairs Director Tim Uggen. And what we'd like entering that motorcade is that if you know of a veteran, if you're a veteran, and you, or if you just want to honor and pay your respects to veterans, is to be on Marine Drive and wave the U.S. and, and Guam flags in honor of those men and women that are serving. The motorcade will then proceed to the PD Guam's Veterans Cemetery, where the ceremony will commence at 10 a.m. We will start playing the reefs on veterans, those that have been sponsored with a designated name and location. And then when those are placed, then we're going to open it up to the remaining reefs to all the other designated veterans that are interned there at, at the Veterans Cemetery. They will also be placing a ceremonial wreath for every branch of service to include Space Force, the newest military branch of service. Wreaths Across America has been held annually for almost 30 years, and in 2008, the U.S. Congress voted unanimously to declare Wreaths Across America Day every year on December 18th. This will be Guam's first year participating in the event. 
again, hopes to make it part of Guam's tradition because almost every single family on Guam either has a veteran in their family, is a veteran, or knows a veteran. Sports is up next with Dave Delgado and still to come, your Coast on Creamery birthday shout outs. Keep it here. Your community calendar is brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live moss. Hafade, this is Congressman St. Nicholas. If you are a small business, you may be interested in a federal program called the State Small Business Credit Initiative. This program can provide federal funds to match equity investments into your company or help you get lower interest rates at local banks. To find out more on how this program can help your small business, please contact your Guam Congressional Office at 475-6453 or at michael.sinicholas at mail.house.gov. This ad was paid for with official funds from the Office of Congressman Michael FQ San Nicolas. Basically, my life was a revolving door of just getting drugs, using drugs. My name is Anne Marie Sablon. Um, I'm 26 years old and I'm a student at Guam Community College, about to graduate with my associate's degree in human services. Got my high school diploma with uh, GCC's Adult High Program. The staff there is very helpful, they're very friendly, and it became like a family dynamic. It's possible for anybody, anybody, especially um, people like me. Who, have, who struggle with addiction. The holidays are here, and you know what that means. Time to gather with family and friends, dress up our homes, and explore the Christmas season in paradise. Why not share these moments for a chance to win $100 in cash? Log on to visitguam.com slash Instaguam today to participate in the Guam Visitors Bureau's hashtag Instaguam photo and video contest. A winner will be chosen every week, so share your best holiday moments now and win. Brought to you by GVB, making Guam a better place to live, Work and visit. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. GW picked up their second consecutive ESA Girls volleyball title after defeating the Simon Sanchez Sharks in the finals. 25-21, 25-19, 25-15. Gecko's right side player Janae Cabrera was feeling it early. Her kill in the first hit gave GW the lead 11-5. Joey Almaguerra extended the lead late in the first set 20-12. The Sharks scored six unanswered points, but lost his set after return went out of bounds. Kana Kanamoto, Hannah Meinick, and Maria Amandi battled tough for the Lady Sharks in the second set. Tied at 10, GW started to make their run. Kiara Diego's two aces put the purple and gold up 15 to 10. Cabrera closed out the set with back-to-back -back aces. In the third, it was all GW. Cabrera again with the hard shot here as they were crowned queens of the court for the second time in league history. Big champions back-to-back really good it's all about the communication it was hard at first but we pulled through as a team the adrenaline feels good i'm happy i'm excited i'm every emotion right now winning a championship really means a lot to us this year because our sophomore year was cut off and then last year we got that first isa championship and this year we took the second one tonight was a lot of fun and we all came out ready to give our all and we did the key to tonight's win was obviously the teamwork the communication, everything, the energy, the energy we had. I love the energy we had. Our coach always remind, reminds us communication is key. We pushed, we, we kept pushing, we wanted it. We really wanted it. We had two good practices in a row, and that's how like we, we found that strength to like take it. I felt really confident with my serves because I knew I really wanted this championship, and I know serves play a big part in like uh, points and stuff. And the effort with my team, I would say, is I'm really proud of them because they really pulled through. Like, we worked so hard this whole season, and it really paid off. Back-to-back uh, -back championship. We won. It's very, like, exciting. In programming news, tune into the stations of KUAM to catch all of your NFL action Monday, December 20th at 4 in the morning on KUAM TV 11, NFL on CBS, 
New York Jets at Miami Dolphins. Then at 11.20 in the morning on KUAM TV 8, NBC Sunday Night Football, New Orleans Saints at Tampa Bay Buccaneers. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Building on the past, we at Docomo Pacific Business believe in helping businesses move forward and together, changing the way we get things done to make you and your company reach your highest potential. Trust in our commitment to bring you the best solutions for all your business goals. We are Docomo Pacific Business. Let's work better together. Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist. Over 20 years of experience. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of the birthday shout outs from the Coat Zone Premier Birthday Club. Happy birthday wishes going out on this Friday, December 17, to Kainoa Kai Flores, who celebrates birthday number seven this year. And to our baby boy, please enjoy your special day. We love you, say mommy, daddy, Malia, Kiyoki, and the family. And Carmen Victoria Gogui. Happy birthday blessings to you from your Ninas and your family. And belated birthday wishes going out today to Michael Lee Taisegui, who was born on the 16th, and Michael celebrates no birthday number two. To our grandson, we love our little superhero character. Hope you had a great day. You're always in our thoughts. May God bless you with good health, protection, and of course, love. And your family is very, very proud of you. And they say simply, we love you. Remember, you can be a part of the Coastal and Creamery Birthday Club by registering online at KOM.com. Now be sure to include with your photo, your name, and first date. And it's that time of the week where we announce the winner of a delicious Coastal and Creamery Birthday Cake. Your winner this week of a yummy Cold Stone Creamery Ice Cream Cake is Net, who was born on the 13th of December. Net, happy extended birthday once again, and congratulations. We'll reach out to you and let you know when you can pick up your delicious and well-deserved prize. Happy extended birthday once again. That's going to do it for us here on Primetime this Friday evening. Guahu Si Isaiah again. Thank you for watching and have a safe weekend. The One Micronesia Podcast is brought to you by Docomo Pacific.